All right, seems like we are live. Let me see if I can get the volume levels. Yep, looks like we're good here. So what's going on, everybody? I am going to do a little um, live broadcast here. I know that in the last couple of weeks, I've gotten quite a few new subscribers. So thank you guys and welcome uh, to the channel. Um, I know some of you know a little bit about music licensing. Other of you are just brand new and don't know anything about it. And I do get a lot of emails and um, comments from newcomers and new subscribers that just say, okay, I like the content, I'm, I'm digging it, I, what, do I, what do I do, how do I get started? So it's a very common question and I decided it'd be a good idea for me to just kind of walk you through at least what I can provide, what I'm doing right now. Um, a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna show you today is completely free, so you can actually get started with a lot of my resources without paying a dime. Um, and I really do wanna make sure you guys can at least get your first couple of uh, steps and, and um, a leg into this business basically um right from your home studio doing everything you're doing right now okay so i'm going to do show you everything that i have right now and you know exactly how you can get started um and what i can offer you is essentially um so as you uh see on the screen this is my website um it is sync my music and um even though the url right now doesn't match that will be matching very soon so if you, you want to visit the site you just click on the link below and by the way i'll stick around afterwards i'm going to just do this quick little five ten minute thing here showing you guys what you can get from my site. Um, and if you guys have any questions or whatever, just post them in the chat. I'll make sure I get to you guys afterwards. Um, I know I haven't done a live, what was I think last week I did the, a live one. Actually, it wasn't that long ago. So what's going on? God Science 7, Jack Spade, Vibe Walker. How you guys doing? Um, okay, so going forward here. So this is my site. Uh, when you first get to it, I do have a free five-day crash course. This is basically going to walk you through the beginning stages of music licensing. If you're new to licensing, you don't know how the business works, you don't know how you can fit into this, if your music is gonna be relevant, this is what you need to do. Go to the site, sign up for this free course, okay? Absolutely free, you just click on this big green button right here, and a little drop down will pop up. Um, I don't know why this email is there, that shouldn't be there, I don't know. Um, and uh, you basically just put your email and address in down here, and you click watch first video now, and you're good to go. So you just have to uh, do that, and then you'll get instantly sent to video uh, one. And then every single day, you're actually going to get a um, an additional video. So you're gonna get video two, video three, video four, video five. And it's gonna get delivered once a day to your email inbox, okay? Um, some people find that they don't get video two or video three, and that's because it probably got delivered to your spam folder. You haven't marked my email as safe. So you either have to just put it on a safe list, or you gotta go digging through your spam folder to find it. If you can't find it, just email me. I normally just send you guys all the links, but you do need to sign up um, for at least video number one, um, and then you can get started that way. So that free crash course will teach you um, essentially uh, how the industry works, um, uh, how to find those companies that are, those libraries that are looking for you know new music and new writers to sign, uh, as well as what kind of music um, gets placed the most, what types of music, what genres, what you know feels, all that kind of stuff. And then um, uh, as well, uh, what else? There's a lot of stuff in there, what else? Um, like how long it's gonna take to actually maybe turn this into a full-time gig for you. I share with you real numbers, like real payments that I've received, real royalties, real upfront sync fees. So you get a, I sense, uh, um, a realistic sense of what you could really do in this business. Um, I don't like to pump you up with, you're gonna be a millionaire, it's gonna, it's like, you can make a decent living, you can do, you can do really well. I don't want you to like shortchange yourself, you can do really well but it's not about making tons of money. That's not what this business really is about. This business is about sustaining yourself comfortably doing what you love doing. That's at least what I've done, okay? I'm not a wealthy man, I'm not a very, very rich man, but I've definitely done well for myself, I've sustained myself, and the coolest part is I did it doing what I love doing. I didn't have to do it through a day job that I wasn't that excited about or working for somebody else. I did it essentially working for myself, serving my clients, okay? And that's the really cool part about this business. Um, Mark, what's up, man? You just joined the syndicate recently, right on. Yeah, I, I know that you just got in there. Uh, Gary, what's going on, buddy? All right, um, so you scroll down the page a little bit. Um, this is where we talk about the syndicate. Um, you guys know what the syndicate is, and this just kind of summarizes a little bit more. I do have an explainer video where I talk about the benefits of that if you wanna learn more um, about that. Um, I do have this little blurb here about why I think music licensing is the way to go these days. I mean, I know that you can still Put out music as an artist, try to get people to buy from you, try to get people to get interested in what you're selling and all that good stuff. But um, music licensing is one of the last segments of the business that I think is actually providing for 
decent full-time income for producers, for a lot of producers, and just average Joes like myself, okay? I am not the most talented producer on planet Earth. I'm not the best uh, musician by far. I am very flawed. As you guys, maybe you guys don't know, most some of you guys know, definitely the syndicate you guys know, I'm not really like a uh, classically trained musician. Like I don't really know scales. I don't know chords. I don't know any of that stuff. All I do is use my ears. Like if it sounds good, it feels good, I put it in my track. I'm, I'm a very emotional um, kind of a producer. So I don't really do, um, you know, the, the music theory thing or whatever. So, but hey, so if you know that stuff, you're in a great position because you're even more qualified. But if you don't, and then most producers I don't think are, that can't get in the way for this industry. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about any of that stuff in this business. They just want to know, can you make some dope tracks for us? Can you make some hot tracks, right? And can you follow our directions? Can you follow our references? That's all that really matters. Um, obviously, you can earn passive income royalties. You guys know all about that. Um, you can get exposure because you guys know that millions of people see this stuff that's on TV. You can bypass social media. I love this because honestly, social media is a little bit Eh, I'm not that into it. I use it obviously to reach out with you guys and connect with everybody in the syndicate. But personally, I don't use it that much. I've never tried to really, I mean, 10 years ago, I was trying to push a band that I was in, but I don't care about getting fans. I don't care about getting attention from people. I don't care about blogs writing about me. I, I just like two things, checks, contracts. And I get plenty of those in this business, okay? So if that sounds good to you, that's why licensing is it's where it's at. That's where I think it's why it's where it's at. Uh, you can make your kind of music. So some people have the misconception that you have to make cheesy jingle songs or whatever. Not true. You can use uh, you can make the kind of music that you're into, the genres that you're really excited about. Um, I'm living proof of that. The the main genres that I produce are rock, pop, uh, EDM, dubstep, that kind of thing. I, lately, I'm kind of getting more into orchestral. I've actually secured uh, one of the last commercials that I just got. Um, was an orchestral cue, actually, and syndicate members know about that, but hush, hush about that. We're not supposed to be talking about that yet, publicly at least. Um, but yeah, that one was an orchestral cue, which I don't have a lot of experience in, but I nailed it. It was great. But you can make many different types of music, but you can make also just the kind of music that you want to make. Um, and really, you can get out of the rat race, as you can see here. So most musicians right now, you go ask them, like, what's your plan? How are you going to do this full time? What's your, um, you know, what's your full time uh, vision here uh, to turn us into a full time job or full time income? And most people will just say, I ah, just, you know, somebody will discover me. I hope <laughs> I hope that somebody really finds out um, they like my music and they, they stumble across my SoundCloud and they hand me a record deal. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it's really actually what people are thinking. It's what a lot of producers are thinking. I've personally talked to producers, and that is their plan. It's a lotto. It's a lotto ticket plan. I'm gonna go to the grocery store or the gas station and buy a lotto ticket every day. And one day, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a millionaire. That's my. That's like their retirement plan. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. Um, and hopefully, you guys are not in that place where you're just hoping something's gonna happen for you. I was there, and I'm not saying this to say like I'm on a soapbox, look, preaching down to you. I've been there. That was where I was for the first, I don't know, five, 10 years of my music career, just hoping and wishing that we'd get a contract uh, or a record deal. It's, it's so disempowering. It, there's, there's no power in that. There's no um, strategy in that. There's nothing you can do about that. You're just hoping and wishing. Um, so uh, rather than do that, why don't you go serve people? Why don't you go find an industry that wants to pay you uh, if you can serve them with great high quality music. So that's why that's why music licensing again is great. Um, you can go through, I have some uh, testimonials, reviews of real people that are uh, in the syndicate and in the master course. Um, these are just links to some of the videos. Some of you guys, you've probably seen most of these videos and I do have a link to my YouTube, so you'll just come right back here. So don't worry about that part. But this is a cool part. So this is all my the free downloads, PDFs and stuff that I've offered. Um, throughout the last year. I'm gonna be adding some more actually this year. So again, if you're new um, and you haven't checked out any of this stuff, I do recommend you check out at least one of these things, something that actually you know uh, seems relevant to you. Uh, this one is 10 Steps to a Six Figure, figure Income. So these are basically the principles that I would recommend to a newcomer to this business um, for how to turn your income, like how to jack up your income uh, super high. Like again, it's kind of like a wide open field. Like you can turn this into just passive income or um, part-time income if you want it to be, just like make a couple bucks here and there. Or like me, it can just be like a full-time gig or you can you can go to the moon. I mean, you can do some crazy things, but you do need to make sure you're, you're smart with how you're working and how you're producing music. So um, these are just essentially the the principles that I recommend to like supercharge your income in this business. Um, this is a cheat sheet. This is again, uh, one of those kind of things that, uh, this is a separate download. 
that would basically, like if I gave this to a newcomer and they didn't know anything about this business, this would pretty much be like my 10 years of experience um, directly summarized into one PDF. So to get any of these, you just click on this download thing. It's gonna ask you to put in your email address when you get to the download page and then you can put it in. Uh, survival guide, there are some issues and problems you can get in trouble with. I've even had situations even within the syndicate where people have gotten in a little bit of trouble doing things kind of foolishly and making mistakes. So this is one of those kind of watch out, beware kind of downloads just to kind of help you out there uh, to make sure you're not making some maybe uh, career killing deadly mistakes and all that good stuff. So um, 10 music libraries, this is just 10 music libraries. So you guys know I have a music library directory that you guys can um, uh, purchase if you'd like to do that, but this is just 10 of them for free. So um, some of these, this is a bit of an older PDF. I think I created this earlier this year. So some of these might be out of business. I, I'm gonna have to refresh um, this one and update this one. So, but hey, give it a shot. Maybe you'll you'll find it. I've actually had, definitely have had students land contracts with uh, a couple of these libraries. So I know that they can get you placements. I don't know how many of them are still operating. I probably will update this for 2018. And so maybe disregard that for now. Three steps. Uh, this one's really cool. So basically what I did is I found um, some already licensed tracks. These are tracks that have been proven that have gotten pretty major uh, placements, including one of the tracks is actually mine. So I know for sure, obviously, one of them did really well. And the other ones, I know the composers, and I've definitely talked to them about the kind of income that they made with those uh, tracks. So basically what this is, is kind of like a step-by-step -step process to compare your tracks, like where you are in your productions to these tracks. And these are the ones that are making money and are actually getting placed. When I was first learning how to write songs and compose and all that good stuff, um, I remember the competition that I would look to or what I was trying to do to make sure that I, I was on par with uh, the competition out there is I would listen to the radio because I figured, well, the stuff's on the radio. That's the stuff that's getting you know, all the money and they're, they're the ones getting all the downloads and they're the ones getting all the attention. So I shouldn't be competing with like another band locally, like trying to be better than them. I should be as good as whatever the top 40 is. So um, when you're going to compete and you're going to look for resources and references, you want to basically compete with the best of the best. You want to make sure that you are on par with what's already out there. So that's just one way to do it on that one. And then this one is just my 30 day licensing plan. This is a really good way to just kind of get started. Again, if you're brand new, you don't know what to do, you're, you're kind of overwhelmed with all this information, this kind of breaks it down day by day, what should you do on day one? Um, and of course, hint, you know, spoiler alert, day one is enroll in my five day crash course. Okay, the first five days, you should watch my five day video. Um, that's gonna load you with tons and tons of information about this business. But then also, of course, getting you to the point where you can get your first contract with the library and then get you rolling, uh, get you started. And of course, right down here, you've got the, the master course. That's my eight week online course that has the digital downloads and you can click on that uh, to learn all about that. So that is my website. You can get that again by clicking on the link below to get any of that information uh, if you'd like to. So let me just kind of scroll through the, um, uh, let's see, uh, comments here, see what I missed. Um, uh, Jack Spade, you're getting some money from royalties, but you need to quadruple it to live off of it. That's the dream. Absolutely, man. Well, to quadruple your money, you should quadruple your uh, cues. You should quadruple your catalog. That's what I would recommend. You can control that. You can't control what kind of placements you get. You can't really control who's going to actually ch take your music. That's completely out of our control. We just hand it off to the people that make those decisions. You can only control how high quality your tracks are and how many tracks are out there. So you want to quadruple the money, quadruple your, uh, your productivity. Um, let's see. Uh, not in it for the fans vibe walker you want to see the money hey man money's cool but i'll be honest uh money doesn't do everything um i didn't get into this business for the money i knew that there was potential for p uh, passive income and really good money and when you get paid oof, and you get paid well it's it's a great feeling um uh, i just got paid for that um um commercial that shall remain nameless and i can't say anything more than that um it feels good to be rewarded for doing music i i not gonna lie about that like getting a nice check that feels really good but honestly uh money comes and goes you have hot months you got quiet months you have great royalty checks you have disappointing ones um you got to be in it for just making money yeah i was making money you got to be in it for just making music uh that's not a freudian slip that was not an that was not a mistake right there um that was just an honest mistake okay uh, you gotta just love making music because if you're just doing this for money you, you'll you'll quit i can tell you right now you just 
unsubscribe from me. Don't don't do anything. Don't take any of my courses. Don't do anything. Um, you got to just love music because your payday, it, it's got to be music. Um, the buzz you feel from getting paid, it wears off 48 hours later. It's like it's gone. Uh, the buzz you feel from knowing that millions of people just heard your tracks. Hey, you might you know if it's your first time, it'll last you a couple of weeks. Like right, you're gonna feel good. You're gonna be walking on cloud nine for a while. But eventually, that's gonna fade, and you're gonna go right back to your keyboard and your DAW. That's really what you are at the end of the day. You're just you got to reinvent yourself. You got to justify your existence every day. You're not. You can't hang your pride on what you did yesterday or last week. You're only as good as whatever you can come up with today. So. It's frustrating, but it's the only way to live. Trust me. You don't want to be that guy that's still talking about stuff you did in 1987. Um, I know a lot of people like that. It's not what you want to be. Um, if you do monthly uh, payments for the syndicate, can you quit at any time? Yes, you can. Now, now, here's the thing, though. If you join and you quit and you want to come back at some point, I will require that you, pull, you pay the full uh, annual payment because... Um, I'm a busy guy, guys, and I can't be chasing you down every single month. You want to quit, you want to come back, you want to quit, you want to come back. So it's one of those things like, yes, like let's say you're just not, I mean, if you're not satisfied with it, you're not feeling like you're progressing, of course, you can cancel any time. That's no problem at all. But I definitely don't want you to, uh, if you're thinking that you can just jump in and, well, I didn't make it for this opportunity, let me jump out and I'll come back in. Nope, I'm not letting that happen, okay? So if you want to come in and give it a shot, and again, this is why I really want only serious producers. It's not about... Let me just get this opportunity. Okay, I didn't like it, and then you get out. The syndicate is about getting you involved in a bigger, wider system of productivity, okay? You're joining a group of people that are trying to do this full-time. So not only are, is everybody manage, or, um, motivating and, and uh, encouraging each other, but the idea is that I'm sort of training you uh, professionally in this group so that as you move forward into this business and start working with other libraries, you have the skills, you have the mindset, you have the attitude, you have the attention to detail, all the things that are necessary to succeed, okay? So it's not about just jumping in and get something and then jumping out. If that's your mentality, just don't join. I'd rather you not be in the group and um, if you're gonna tell me that before you join, you probably shouldn't have told me that um, because I might look at you a little suspect that that's what you're in this for. It's just trying to get a quick little uh, placement and then you're out of here. Um, this is about long-term success and if that's your mindset and you're thinking you're just gonna jump in and get something and then get out, this business is not for you, right? Whether or not you stick with my group is irrelevant. Just licensing is just not going to be in it for you. You've got to have a long-term commitment to, yes, this is going to be something that I want to do for 10, 15, 20 years, okay? That's the kind of long-term mindset that you got to have. Not assuming anything about you, okay? Nothing personal, but just letting you know that's what you got to do. Um, uh, Lawrence, or is it Lawrence? Um... Uh, if a company is making a commercial and wants a custom track, would they ever look to find a track they like on a music library and then ask to remove it and customize it? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, anything's possible. If there's a certain track that they like and they can afford it from a library, yes, they can either just pay for it. Now, if they're saying like they want that track only for their um, commercial and nobody else can use it, they're going to pay a pretty fee because they have to take it out of a library's catalog, and that means the library can't license it anymore. Um, that's less likely. More likely what's going to happen is they're going to say, hey, library, whatever, we like this track that you have in there. Can you give us something like it, right? Because that's typically what they're going to do, and they're going to go pay one of the library will go pay one of its composers to create something like that track so that now they can exclusively have it. Um, and if they're going to exclusively take it, then you can obviously charge a little bit more. That's more likely than they're going to take it out of a library uh, and mess with it. However, if the company making the commercial doesn't care about it being exclusive or not, um, yeah, they'll just take it from the library and say, hey, can we make some alterations or can you do this? I mean, anything, It's everything's negotiable. Everything can be done. Um, and if there's a budget, a library, they want to get paid too, and the composer wants to get paid. So typically you can play ball um, and do that kind of thing. Uh, EKM, EK, EKM Beats, uh, a few of your tracks got accepted to two different libraries last month, and a cha my channel was a huge help. Right on, man. Hopefully you can get some success from them. Really cool. Your job right now that you've been accepted is go serve them, right? Ask them what they want. Ask them what their clients are looking for. Uh, we just got accepted into a new major, major uh, library, really, really big library. And the first email I sent to them after we signed the contract and we were good to go, I said, what you need? I got all these writers. I got all this stuff coming at me. What are your needs? What are your clients looking for? What kind of programming are you guys doing? 
And they hit me back and they gave me a quite a big list of what they're looking for. So that's what I'm going to start un unloading onto the, uh, the syndicate members here pretty soon. Um, so you got to be a uh, service mindset. It's the first thing that's one of the big you know, giveaways I'll give you from my uh, master course is I, I tell you, get into a service mindset, become a janitor. Okay. You're not a rock star. You're not a diva. You're not sitting on top of a throne and you're not special. Okay. If you can get that out of your head, you can be wildly successful. Okay. You got to get, get your ego out of the way, become a janitor and go clean up messes. Okay. Metaphorically, go serve somebody's needs. Go find out what a library wants. Go fix their problems. Okay. Be a person that comes and fixes problems. They're going to throw money at you. They're going to throw contracts at you. Okay. That's one of life's, life's biggest secrets. Um, uh, Amityville, you want to do this full time? You want to be serious about it? Yep. Absolutely, man. Um, uh, after 12 months in the group, are you permanently in or do you got to pay again? You can continue on if you'd like to, but you will continue to pay the monthly fee if you want to keep getting you know, feedback and guidance and tutorials. I mean, you're still getting a service. So it's not like at the end of 12 months, you suddenly stop getting service. Uh, there's still service coming at you. But the idea is that after 12 months, you should have the skills, the feedback. You should know. I mean, you got syndicate members who've been in there for a couple of months. They start to see this pattern emerge with all this feedback and the homework assignments and what, and they can hear what tracks are getting placed. And if there's something that's going on with their music, after a couple of months, they start to get it. You know what I'm saying? And after 12 months, you should be in a place where you're confident enough, you've got the skills, you've got the production to go out there and have your own powerful network of uh, libraries that you're working with. Of course, the goal of the syndicate is to get your first couple of placements out there, get your foot in the door, maybe start building your royalty stream there, but it's not your last step, okay? So the, the idea is not, you're not gonna be a lifelong member of the syndicate, that's not what I want, okay? Um, in fact, I just had a couple of students that left because they're so busy with libraries that they've secured contracts with and other people that they just felt like that's the best place for them to be and they just don't have enough time for the opportunities of what's going on here and I was like, I'm sad to see you go because you're awesome, but that means I did what I was supposed to do. That means it, it's, it worked. Like the syndicate actually worked for you. You're actually out there doing some great things. And uh, they definitely told me, this student, that like it was my uh, feedback and my tutorials and all that kind of stuff that gave them that confidence and gave them that feedback to know that they're on the right track and they can do that. A lot of this stuff has to do with your guys' confidence. I really realized that, that like you just, it's also knowledge. I mean, you need to know what you're doing and how to really make the right kind of music. But if you haven't gotten your first placement yet or your first contract yet, you just don't have the confidence yet. You don't have that confidence built into you yet. And that's okay. You shouldn't probably have it yet if you haven't succeeded yet or gotten that sort of first step in there. So that's the idea of the syndicate is to just let anybody who wants to get started Get that little bit of confidence built up, get that training, get your ears trained, get your production skills up to par, offer you all the things that I'm offering you in that group. And then by the end of 12 months, you're a well-oiled machine. You can go out there and knock down any wall you want to. You can get into any library that you really like to get into. That's the goal. Of course, at the end of 12 months, you want to continue on, you need some more, you're totally welcome to stay. Obviously, you can stay. Um, but that's not, uh, it's not a lifelong situation that I'm looking for here. It's just basically the 12 months. That's essentially uh, how it's designed. Um, yeah, Jack, so you're definitely in the long, front, long run paying for something. Yes, questions, of course. No, yeah, no, and I'm not saying like, yeah, ask away if you have tons of questions and stuff. Like I said, I'm not trying to... Um, assume you're just trying to get in to get whatever um, but again like once you start with my program I, I can just tell you this though my program pro will not work for you if you're not willing to basically go the long distance with this basically and um, and the other thing that I will tell you that like when you get into the syndicate you got to make sure that you watch if you can it's a lot I mean guys I, I put out review videos every single week and they can tell you like some of them are three, two or three hours long. Okay. So some of these review videos are very long. My voice is like almost gone, like kind of like how it is right now. Um, but a lot of people, you know, we, we've got busy lives and I don't hold it against uh, the members who do this, but they'll just fast forward in the video right to their track to be like, okay, let me just see what's going on with my track. The people that do really well though are the ones that watch more than just their track because you can learn. And many of you guys know from my channel, you guys have watched when I did uh, the open reviews for all you guys. Um, you know you learn a lot by just watching other people's songs and going, okay, this is like, it's a fun exercise actually. It's just you listen to the video 
and you go, okay, well, I think this, I think, I think Jesse's going to say that this needs to be stronger or this or that. And that's how you train your brain and you train your ears to start producing right, the right kind of music and more licensable music and you improve. It's really about ear training. And so if you can just follow along with a lot of the review videos, even if it's not your song being reviewed currently, you can kind of play along and see like, all right, I'll pretend to be Jesse. So I'm a, I'm a licensing professional and I'm listening to this song. What works with this song? What doesn't work with this song? What can I improve about it? What do I think Jesse's going to say? And then you can kind of compare notes with me and see like what my biggest beef with the song is or what I like about it. And the members that can spend the most time watching those review videos are the ones that are going to train their ears the fastest. I can tell you that is for sure probably the most valuable thing you're getting out of the syndicate. I can tell you licensing opportunities. Yes, everybody. That's the big cherry on top. That's the icing on the cake. Everybody wants to have music licensed. I totally get that. And there's going to be plenty of those opportunities in the group, but it's really not the the main value of what you're getting with the group. It's really those 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 feedback videos and the guidance and the kind of um, the ideas that I'm giving you when I listen to the tracks and tell you what my gut instincts are, what I'm feeling, what I'm not feeling. If this track is hitting a certain emotional tone, if it's not hitting a tone, if there's something kind of funky with the mix, or there, you know, it sounds over compressed. Or like even one of the uh, members just last week submitted a, um, he wanted me to review his demo that he was going to send out to some uh, uh, libraries. And they all the tracks sounded cool. They were like really awesome rock tracks. But I, the notes that I gave him was like, you know, you got these three really cool tracks in this demo, but they're all kind of in the same lane. Like, yes, it's all rock, but it's like literally they're all very similar in BPM and style and emotion. So if you're going to come into a library, you're definitely going to be their guy for the kind of, you know, slower, melodramatic rock kind of stuff. Or it wasn't melodramatic, but whatever. It's just that BPM, that kind of rock. But if you really want to, like, come in there like a, like a wrecking ball, why don't you come in with some pop punk and some straight ahead rock and some metal and some speed metal and death metal and this and that. And come in like just like a wave, like, boom, I'm your rock guy right? Now you're the rock guy. You're not just the slow, mellow, whatever. You, again, your first impression with a library is all about branding yourself as a producer. Um, and so if you only come in with one specific tiny little, you know, niche that you can get into, um, you know, even though we're talking about, let me rephrase that. It's not about that. But, you know, you want to basically have as many um, uh, emotions and styles within your niche. That's a better way to phrase it. Uh, to get in there. So if you're like a pop producer, you don't want to have three songs that are kind of all sound like they're you know, whatever, Nicki Minaj songs or Justin Bieber uh, tropical pop songs. You want to have one that's tropical pop. Maybe you have another one that's like reggaeton. And then you have a third one that's, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, dance, EDM, four on the floor or something like that. You got to have maybe a little, a little range of sounds that you do that are all, you know, pop dance. That's the little niche that you're in. But you want to come in like a wave, boom. I can do all of these within this genre so that you kind of can uh, find a little corner, a little niche for yourself within the library. So hopefully that makes sense. Sorry, I got <laughs> I confuse myself sometimes. So I'll stick around for a couple more minutes, guys, um, and then I got to get off. So let me know if you have any questions. Post them in the chat. Um, I don't think I missed anything. I think most of those questions I addressed. But again, you know, if you guys want to learn anything more about the syndicate, uh, the master course, the downloads, any of that stuff, um, just click on the link below. I will be going through a domain change uh, early, uh, late December, early January. So basically around the New Year's. Um, but nothing should be interrupted. Um, everything on the previous domains is going to forward to the new one. So if you ever need to find it again, it'll automatically forward you there. Um, you might have to click a couple of links here and there just to get back to where you wanted to go. But it should be fairly uh, seamless. I think I got that figured out. If a Lawrence, if a syndicate member makes a good relationship with a library that I have introduced them to, later down the line, would it be expected that X member to continue to give you their publisher share? I'm not sure what I mean. What you mean by that? Yeah, I, I think you're saying like if they work with a library that they got through me first, and then they go work with them directly later on, or something like that. And like if you're going directly to the people by yourself, like I have nothing to do with that. So no, like I don't have anything to do. Um, with their publishers there at that point, if that's what your question is. Um, so, but for opportunities that are in um, the syndicate, uh, yeah, you are basically signing NDAs so that you're not sharing information and you're not directly uh, approaching these music libraries. So yeah, there's a non-compete um, issue with the uh, opportunities that I provide to you, okay? And if you don't wanna submit, you don't wanna be a part of that, cool, don't submit. It's a non-negotiable thing. The reason why I do that is because I've had issues where we worked with certain distribution companies or libraries, 
and I didn't put that in place, and then they got bombarded with submissions and emails and people trying to sign up for their site, and just it was a, actually it was kind of a mess because then the library came to me and said, Jesse, do you know this person and this person and this person? And it was like, oh yeah, yeah, I know who that is. Like, well, you know, we're kind of not really interested in working with like all of these writers. We liked working with you because we had access to all those writers, but we only had to deal with one person. That's like the big thing why this works so well is because they can deal with one guy, me, to handle everything, right? And that's why I basically have all the syndicate members um, sign their contracts with me. So that for I have the ability to sign those over in one fell swoop to a library. So it actually streamlines the entire process for them. Uh, some li Not all of them, but some libraries don't work directly with writers, believe it or not. They only work with catalogs. And that's essentially what I'm operating as um, behind the syndicate is basically a catalog. Uh, I'm not a library in that I don't directly distribute to production companies or anything like that, but I do gather music from writers and then get it distributed through um, you know, libraries. But it's also music supervisors and we can also directly pitch to networks and that kind of thing. So we're not just working with libraries here. There's other people there. Um, will there be any track review? Oh yes, um, probably. I'll probably do one around Christmas time. Um, I, I've got so much stuff going on right now towards the end of the year, so I will I will definitely do that. Um, I know I promised I'm definitely going to do another one. Um, but the next one, just like I said before, though, I'll probably just make it live. So I'll, I'll send out an email. I didn't even send an email out for this one. Sorry, guys. I just felt like getting on here. But I will send out an email and uh, let you guys know that and try to give you maybe like a day's notice so you can get a track up to me. Um, but you will have to send it to me during the live broadcast. And as long as you send it to me during the live broadcast, I'll basically live open up my email and start reviewing. So yeah, just check out for that. Uh, how do I feel about Vibrowalker? How do I feel about signing gratis licenses that allows you to keep 100% pub and writers? Um, are you signing contracts that allow you to keep both? I'm really curious, like what companies you're, that are allowing you to keep your publishing and your writers? Cause, uh, What's in it for them? I guess just the sync fee. Um, I mean, that's a good deal for you, but are they going to actually get you placements with that kind of thing? Typically, anybody who's going to work with you are going to want to take something on the back end to make it worth their while. And publishing is typically where a library or somebody distributing your music would take. So I'm not sure who you're signing with with that kind of thing. Sounds good, though. Um, how about the opposite of having one sound, loving music uh, that you get versatile and can't focus on one sound? Um, Oh, okay. So Carlos, if you're uh, scatterbrained a little bit and you're kind of doing all these different things, yeah, in the beginning, uh, I do think that you need to narrow it down to like one or two and you need to go with the thing that you're the best at, okay? If you want to get this done faster and you don't want to be spending years trying to get better at your production, go with the path of least resistance. So if you do, you know, hip hop and pop and rock and just all this stuff, all right, what are you great at, okay? And you know there's probably one or two that you're really good at. And I, I kind of call BS on anybody that says, oh no, man, I'm just equally good at all of them. No, you're not. I've heard so many producers, I've heard so much music. There's definitely one or two that you're really, really good at, okay? It's, it's what comes natural to you. It's what you have the best sounds with. It's just what you love producing the best or it's just easiest for you. That's where you need to go first, okay? And then make it licensable, make it upbeat, make it up uh, up tempo generally, um, and make some really well uh, crafted tracks and start there, okay? You just gotta, you gotta zero down on that stuff. Uh, seventh Ward Mel, if I become, a, if you become a member, how often do you get hip hop licensing opportunities? We actually just uh, added one today and I'm going to be posting a video tomorrow about that. Um, we've done a trap one. What else have we done? We've done one trap one this year. We've got a hot hip hop one that just started now. I want to say there was another one. I can't remember, but, um, probably more and more actually. I am about to release, um, Actually, I'm not going to say anything else. Yeah, whatever. You guys know now. But yeah, hip-hop and trap, very, very high in demand. Um, we've had a couple this year, but I think more are going to be coming. But you guys know, I mean, if you're not on my email list, go to my website, um, the link in the description below, um, and you can sign up for the free five-day course to get on the email list. And I always email you guys, if I can, let you know what we're looking for. Sometimes I can't. Like the custom gigs... 99% of the time, you're never going to hear about that. Like we had an international one two weeks ago and then a national one right after that. Nobody on my email list knew about that. Nobody here on YouTube knew about that. I, I talked about it afterwards, um, but I can't share that stuff because it's just time sensitive and also it's confidential. So that's the kind of stuff you just, that's a privilege of being inside the group. You're going to know about that stuff. But these are like the albums that we're putting together that are shopping out there. So I can obviously tell you about those ones. Um... 
uh, Star Key Nova. These like some of these guys, you guys have like capital letters, low case. I, I, I never understood that. I can't read your names when you do that. Uh, do I think those illegal websites that have movies and TV shows for free will affect the amount of money made in royalties for us musicians? Yes, you're not making money off of those. Um, the upper question about hip hop. Uh, the upper question. Oh, okay. So you're saying like you can go in and out of a couple different sounds with hip hop? I don't know what you mean by that. Um, and Carlos, I know you just got into the group, man. You can just email me. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Uh, this is a direct TV production you're signing with. Oh, cool, man. So I don't know what's in it for them. Uh, I mean, unless you got a hookup and they're like, yeah, you hear you can take publishing and writer share and they're directly going to give you a placement on a TV show or in whatever. Dude, jump all over that. Like that's that's the best relationship you could bet possibly get. So yeah, I mean, as long as you are gonna get paid and they're legit or whatever, but sounds really good. Um, uh, Jack Spade about hip hop reality shows seem to to involve trap stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You got Kardashian stuff. Yep, hip hop is all over the place on reality shows. Um, what cut do I take? Uh, publishing writers. Uh, I take zero and zero. How, how's that for that? Um, the publishing does get transferred over to my company, but that's again so I can transfer it off to our partner. So um, there was only one uh, situation where I actually took uh, a portion of the publishing, and that was for our Fox Sports opportunity, which is at the beginning of this year. Uh, since then, I'm not taking anything on the back end, guys. So if you guys get placements, you're keeping the 100% writer share, and either the company is keeping all of the publisher share, or sometimes they split it with you know whatever their situation is. So sometimes there's different companies that are getting involved in the publishing, but nothing. I, I get nothing off of you guys. So you guys are keeping what's rightfully yours on the publishing side, and they're keeping what's on them their side for the uh, publishing. So I'm simply just providing opportunities for you guys. Okay, that's my job. Okay, if you're getting into the syndicate. I got to get to work. Like my job is to find opportunities for you got real opportunities, okay? Not just made up ones, real opportunities to really get you guys on TV. That's what my job is, okay? Um, and so with the, um, sorry, my phone's buzzing here. Um, and so the opportunities that I provide, the, the idea of why it's so powerful to have a mentor guide you through them is that if you just go out and let's say you do land a contract with a library and they start asking you for custom music, this and that, you don't really know what you're doing and you've never done it before and you've never really followed a reference track and you don't really know like how do you know if you're on path on track or not that's what i'm providing here okay this is a big missing piece of the music licensing business typically if you send music to a library and they don't like it they'll just not respond to you or just say yeah no thanks your music's not really there yet or we don't have a need for it they'll have a polite way of telling you basically you suck no we're not going to sign you that's essentially what they're telling you um and so there's really no there's not many places to go find out well what did i do wrong because they don't have the time to like go out and like, hey, so you submitted, okay, you 10 people today submitted, let's go through and they don't owe you that. Like they don't owe you any sort of feedback or anything. They're their business, they're there to make money. So you, you know, they're gonna be taking more time to give you that feedback. So that's why the syndicate is a sort of, you know, um, you'd be a customer and I'd be a service kind of a relationship because you're paying a fee and you're demanding a service and you better get the service that you're happy with or else you know, you can leave me negative feedback, you can cancel, you can ask for a refund, there's other things you can do, but you can hold me accountable essentially for the service that I provide for you. But I found that in the licensing business, this is a big missing piece. I, I think that more um, people need to be providing this kind of a service and I'm happy to have competition. So if anybody's watching this and you wanna do something like what I'm doing, please do it, come on out here, like make me better, right? The more there's competition in this business, uh, the better I'm gonna be. I do not shy away from competition. I love competition because I'm very, I'm a very, I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm a very competitive person. I'm ready to go. Like I got energy. I really want to do well. So I love it if somebody wants to come in here and provide even a better service for other musicians. Because you know who's going to win? You guys, right? If you have people competing to try to get the best service for musicians that are trying to get into the licensing business, you guys can only win from that, right? Because now you can shop. You can go back and forth. Is this guy good? Is that guy good? Is this service good? So, you know, it, it's it's only going to benefit everybody when there's more competition in this space. And I'm actually really surprised there's not a lot of people that provide this kind of a service, if, if maybe anybody. But, I mean, I know there's other courses. There's other, you know, downloads and that kind of thing. I'm not saying I'm the only person, obviously. I did not invent this at all. Uh, but there's not a lot, so... Uh, so you're asking uh, if it'll affect the amount of money musicians make if mostly everyone is watching those shows on the illegal websites. Yes. I mean, you already know the answer to that. If everybody starts watching illegal websites that aren't paying royalties, yeah, like nobody's getting paid. 
Yes. <laughs> That's why Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and all these streaming sites know they have to provide a very um, user-friendly and affordable and easy um, platform. Because if you go to illegal sites, what do you find? Pop-ups, porn, uh, you know, whatever. Just, just crap, right? And you can't find, I mean, you click a button and it's like you can't find what you really were looking for and maybe something's going to start downloading and get you malware. I mean, Going to illegal sites is a headache and a hassle and actually risky for people. That's why they typically, I mean, yes, people still do it, don't get me wrong, but that's why people do spend $9.99 on Netflix or on uh, Hulu, whatever Hulu charges. That's why people do that. That's why Apple Music worked, right? Uh, Netflix is free, was free. I think it's shut down, obviously, now. But why did Apple Music work when people could have gotten all their music for free? Well, because sometimes you download an album and you get it and it wasn't the music that you wanted or it was a virus or it was a porn video or something like that. So Apple Music thought they had a theory. They said, what if we give a legit service that you pay for, but you guarantee every time you download that, that song, you get the song and you can find it quickly. We have a really easy searchable app on Napster. Sometimes you couldn't find the right good version or whatever. It was low quality. So Apple can guarantee quality and quality guarantee service so they thought maybe people will pay for this sure enough people did people ran to apple music so if you provide a legitimate service people will pay for it all right i'm gonna get on too many rants here um hello from iran wow that made my first iranian viewer welcome uh i'll i'll blow that's the best i can do man i <laughs> know that's that's definitely wrong um how quick can a member of his f get his first licensing RB once he joins the syndicate? Um, well, I mean, as soon as I, right now, basically what I have with my opportunities is their first come first serve. So if you upload a track, um, I do a video uh, review video about once a week, sometimes more often, depending on how busy I am that week. Um, but if you can get a track up and it's like good to go and I like it, I'm accepting it right there. Now, of course, I'm not going to submit all the tracks until I get my full album. So. Uh, in terms of like when can it be passed on to a library, like within a month, you know, it can be within a month. When is it going to be on TV? I mean, that depends. Like, you know, there's obviously no guarantees at that point. We've definitely gotten some placements with members, um, but it can take a while. So, again, you know, the sort of the how quick part of your question worries me a little bit because are you thinking that you're going to get something like right away? Well, this is not the business for you. It's going to take a while. Um, again, it takes six to nine months before you even get your royalty checks once it gets placed on TV. If that's unbearable for you and you don't have the the persistence or the long-term mindset to deal with that, you got to go. This is just not the business for you. It takes a certain kind of producer. That's why I've said, you know, this is not for everybody. Um, Jack Spades, planning on joining in a month or two. Right on, man. Glad to have you in the group. Um, are you ever take film scoring or trailer music opportunities? It's funny you ask that, Carlos. Um, we might be having something soon. I don't say anything until I have something for sure. That's that's my policy. So I'm not going to hype you guys up on some opportunity. But I did just talk to uh, one of our partners and there's definitely well, I'm not going to say definitely potentially there's trailer opportunities coming our way. But that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, cool, man. A, a bowl. Able? Able or a bowl? I don't know, man. Uh, I'm glad you like the channel, man. Um, how many songs do I send off at a time for a brief? Uh, it depends vibe on what they want. So if it's a custom queue, um, uh, sometimes, uh, for like a commercial or something like that, if I can, I'll try to do two, maybe three, you know, depending on the timeline, if it's like due in 48 hours, which a lot of times it is, they give you like a couple of days to do it. Um, I'll try to give them a couple of options. Uh, I typically find people like options. People are human beings. They like options. If you just give them one and they're not thrilled about it, they typically will say no. But if you give somebody two options, maybe one they're not thrilled about, but that makes the second option look a lot better. So psychology here, right? You give people a couple of options to compare it. But sometimes they'll tell you exactly like, you know, if it's for a reality show or whatever, or just a library, they'll say, hey, we're looking to do 10 songs or 12 songs or give us four. They'll tell you what they want. You just follow their directions. Uh, EKM, for someone starting off, how would you go about marketing yourself after uploading tracks to music libraries? Um... So how would you go about marketing yourself after uploading? Well, see, the marketing comes getting into libraries. That's who you're marketing to. So unless you're talking about like you want to actually go now gather fans or something like that, you want to build up your social media, 
Uh, that's a that's a different thing. That's not me. Uh, you got to go talk to somebody else about how to get fans. I don't get fans. I don't care about fans. I'm not trying to get fans. But if you're talking about how to market yourself in the licensing world, well, you got into the library, so you marketed yourself to the right people. So when we're talking about marketing and, and promoting yourself here, that's who we're talking about impressing and marketing ourselves to is music libraries and music supervisors. So assuming you already got into a library, well, you already <laughs> you successfully marketed yourself. Okay, so thumbs up to you. Um, now, you know, how do you go on to the next process? Well, make sure you're not spreading yourself too thin. Okay, so you get your first library and then suddenly you think, oh, let me go get another, another. Probably the first thing you should do, again, is ask them what they need, what kind of music they have going on. You're gonna find out within probably three or four months like how busy they're gonna keep you. Some libraries, they're gonna put you to work right away. We need this, we need that, we need this. They're gonna tell you there's like four different genres or four different projects that they have going on and they're gonna ask you what you can contribute to those and they're gonna get you started right away. Others will maybe take the tracks that you submitted and then they'll just say, all right, well, um, yeah, we'll be in touch and we're gonna let you know when we have new stuff and then like a month will go by, you'll never hear from them. Okay, yes, move on. Get another library under your belt. These guys are going to sleep on you. They're not putting a lot of, they're not, you know, it's nothing personal against them, but they just maybe don't have a lot of work or opportunities right now or just, they're not a very busy firm. It, it, there's many things that can happen, okay? So you don't want to sit around again. The video I put out just yesterday was never wait for anybody. Don't be waiting for anybody, okay? Get a second one out there. But you do need to... um uh, yeah, at some point, maybe start building a relationship to get two or three. I, I do recommend, like I said, two or three exclusive libraries. If you want to do non-exclusive ones, um, you can probably add one or two of those on top of that. Obviously, non-exclusive ones, you really got to gauge that. Because um, if they're not paying you for music and it's non-exclusive, don't get me wrong. I still I still work with pretty much at this point one non-exclusive library and they get me placements and they get me great placements so I love them okay so not all of them are in this category but a lot of them because they're non-exclusive that means they're kind of the I'm not going to say that I'm going to say they have music that everybody else has okay so they're not exclusively tied to the music that they're shopping so therefore they're not as intrinsically valuable to production companies and trailer houses and all that kind of stuff because anybody can get that music if it's not exclusive. That's why, you know, I, I say um, a, another freebie you're going to get if you guys are watching this one um, with my master course is exclusive libraries typically are where you want to focus 80% of your work, maybe 20% you throw to a non-exclusive one, something like that. You don't want to get lost in the rat race of, you know, sending the same 10 tracks to 10 different non-exclusive libraries and thinking you're going to climb ahead that way. This is a relationship business. This is a... Um, it, it relies on personal relationships. Uh, getting some great relationships with well-connected exclusive libraries is where it's at. That's how I did it, okay? So I'm teaching you guys what I know. Um, you've heard me say before, there's a big difference between the sync business and being a composer. How is a custom job different? I guess you would say that's where they intermingle, uh, Lawrence. That's where they sort of come together. That yes, um, especially for the opportunities that we had recently, they gave us the actual video file and we scored directly to that. So yeah, in that situation, Call me a composer all you want. Um, but it's not the most common thing that you do in on this side of the business in terms of feeding libraries music. You're typically just creating music and there's no video in front of you. You're just making sure that it's really great and licensable. Um, but composers, you know, 99% of the time will have a full fi film or a feature film or a TV show that they get delivered. And it's like, you need to compose music for this particular scene because you got to hit certain specific beats, right? Somebody looks down and you need to have the music actually like, you know, hit that emotional tone at that specific time. It's the same thing. Yeah, it is exactly right. What we're doing with our custom cues. Yes, it's right there. Um, it's just because I'd say, you know, 80, 90% of the time we're not doing that. That's why I don't, I don't know, my composer, whatever. To the outside person who doesn't understand this industry, sure, call me a film composer. It helps people understand it. But you guys know there's a kind of a the big difference there between somebody who's actually scoring to film and somebody who's creating tracks, instrumental tracks, even vocal tracks. It's a little bit different. Uh, sip of water here. Uh, Hugo, how long did it take before I got accepted into a library? Can I suggest any learning resources? <laughs> you must be late, man. The first part of this uh, video was all about, yes, all my resources. If you look behind me, uh, you can see actually this big green button and you go to his uh, website by clicking on a link below this video. Click this big green button and you can enter your email and that's actually how you can get started in this business. I've created this for you <laughs> directly. Um, but how long did it take? Well, actually I, because I was in a band at the time and I uh, sort of got introduced through a mutual friend 
to a library owner, um, I got accepted fairly quickly on. Uh, it was a couple of months. I mean, it took me a while before my tracks were licensable. Um, the library owner was generous enough to kind of give me some feedback and tell me, yeah, this is working, but that's not. Try this, try that. And my first couple of tracks were not not the worst thing ever, but man, you listen to them now, you're like, that that sucked. Um, but thank, thankfully, this guy and his company gave me a shot and put me on, put me in his library and got me started. So I sort of fortunately, you know, met somebody pretty early on um, and got some training and got some mentorship and got that going. Um, but there were a lot of things that I didn't learn in that early process. A lot of things that I wish I had learned, and I wish somebody like me had been there to kind of say, hey look out for this, look out for that, make sure you're watching out for this, watch out for these kind of contracts, make sure you protect this or do that. So there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know. I was really green. I, I had no idea what I was doing in many ways. So um, fortunately, I got sort of like plugged in um, fairly quickly. But um, yeah, but that's just whatever. You Sometimes you stumble into the right people at the right time. But the cool thing is ever since that uh, day, every relationship that I've made in this business has been purely online, 100% honestly. Everything that I, all the new relationships, all the libraries that I feed, everybody that I know, everybody that has my phone number who calls me up for opportunities, started with an email or a Facebook message. That's how it starts these days, guys. You don't have to fly all the way around the world, uh, around the country, going to you know uh, networking opportunities and being a creep and trying to hang on to people's to coattails uh, to get into their circles. You know, if you got undeniable music and an unde undeniable pitch. An email can get you in. An email is all it really takes. Right time, right place obviously helps, but having an undeniable pitch, an undeniable um, you know, uh, offer for somebody, that's all you need. DEM, hats off to me for how I expound on the questions. Glad you're liking that, man. Uh, all right, cool. Gary, is it important to have your tracks tagged online? I think I saw something on a certain music library that they said they don't accept it unless it's tagged. Um, I don't know what that means, tagged. Does that mean you've like registered with something like TuneSat so that somebody's tracking it? Or you mean like metadata tag? I, you have to, Gary, you have to um clarify what you mean by that one. I don't know what you mean by tagged. I've never had anybody say, Jesse, are your tracks tagged? We have to make sure we have them tagged before we accept them. I've never been asked that, so I'm kind of confused if you can clarify. And I'm going to be on for just uh, two or three minutes, guys, and then I got to get off. I'm just kind of waiting for the uh, comments to catch up here. I think they're having them on the, the setting where I can see them faster or not, but I'm not. I'm not sure. Who knows? Yeah, December, man. This uh, this group got super busy, like super fast. It's just crazy. Metadata tag. So. Okay, when I ever, whenever a library asks me about metadata, um, basically they'll give me a spreadsheet. Um, an Excel spreadsheet, and I'll say, fill this out. Give us all this information. And so that's basically all I've ever had to do for metadata. Some libraries take care of that themselves because they have a certain way they want to do it, and they know that if they try to ask a writer to do it, they screw it up or they didn't, don't put the right information in there. So they know like the easiest way sometimes is just for them to do it themselves. Um, other times they will ask the you, the writer, to do it themselves. So that's the only metadata that I've ever worked with. I've never had anybody ask me if my stuff is inherently, like if the audio file is tagged with metadata, like that's never been something I've been asked to do, so. Do I reckon filmmakers would ever scout for composer talent on music libraries? Um, I can imagine, for sure. Um, let's see, I mean, anytime, I mean, anything is possible, of course. I, I don't know if that'd be the first place that they would go to try to find, um, like a composer because that's typically when you go to a library you're not really looking for a person to work with you're looking for a song right like what what's the purpose of going to a library well like hey i have a a trailer and i need a perfect uh track to work here it's not necessarily like you're looking for the composer right um so if they're looking for a composer they'll probably try to just ask their contacts or people that they know um so if you have a way to network with them okay go for it but a lot of times they'll just go to a library just for the music they'll want to just go pay to use a particular track What genre is most popular right now? Uh, there probably is no such thing as the most popular, but I've always said you just stick with what's on the charts and you'll do great, okay? Listen to the pop charts, listen to the hip hop charts, listen to rock, um, if rock even exists. Yeah, there's a little bit of rock still out there. Um, 
and uh, what else? I mean, orchestral stuff is always always, always so, sort of relevant, but um, watch TV. Um, definitely watch what's out there on commercials and on TV shows and reality shows and what's playing in the background. Again, if you want to compete, compete with the best, right? You, you look for what's being played right now. What, what are the professionals doing? That's pretty much your best tell for what's going on. Uh, none of this is really <laughs> rocket science at all. Uh, song tagged with audio, I think what Gary means. Yeah, I don't really do anything like that, so uh, I'm not really sure. So, All right, guys, I am uh, heading out. Thank you so much. Again, last time I'll say it, click the link below. If you're new, new to the channel, welcome. If you want to learn more about what I can offer, um, what other educational resources I have, click on that link. That'll get directly to everything that I provide. That's my one-stop shop. So if I don't have it, it's not on that website. I just don't carry it. It's not something that I talk about. I'm not going to tell you how to get fans. I'm not going to tell you how to get uh, you know famous off of your social media. I don't care about that stuff. That's not interesting to me. I care about contracts and checks. I care about licensing. I care about passive income through royalties. That's what I'm about. So if you want to learn more about that stuff, you guys know where to find it. Click on the link below. Have a great day, guys.